Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to be exploring C programming, starting with the basic idea of creating a simple program and compiling that program and running it on our system. For these videos, I'm going to be using Ubuntu as my operating system of choice. You can really follow along with any Linux operating system. I highly recommend using Linux because we're going to be working with a lot of things like system programming utilities and this type of idea. So it's easier to follow along on a Linux distribution of some sort. For writing our programs, I'm gonna be using just a simple text editor. In my case, I'm gonna be using Nano since that's just like a basic text editor that comes in most Linux distributions. You can use things like Emacs, you can use Vim, you can use some other IDE. It doesn't really matter what text editor or IDE you use. As long as you can follow along with the code, that's all that really matters. So for this video, let's go ahead and create a really basic C program and talk a bit about how C structures its programs and how we actually do compilation and running of programs through C. So to start off, I'm going to create a file. I'm going to call mine first.c. And inside of this file, we're going to put some very basic code. The most basic code that we could really have in C is we have to have a main function. And I'll break down each of these different pieces. So in this main function, the int is the return type. So this returns an integer value. Main is the name of the entry point of our program. So there always has to be a main function. This is where we start executing our program. And I put void in these brackets to say that I'm not accepting any sort of arguments. The arguments that would be in these brackets would be things like command line arguments. In this case, we don't need anything like that. So I'm gonna set this as void. And as we continue to progress along talking about C, we'll see some other instances where we may put some arguments inside of those brackets. So starting off, the most basic thing that we can really do is simply just return from this function. And the value that we return in this function is what's gonna be set as the exit code for the program. So I could show you that general concept. If I set this to zero as my return, this is the very basic code that I have. What we're going to do is we're gonna close out of this after saving, of course. And I'm gonna go over to my other tab here and I'm just going to run a compile on this first.c program. And the way that I do that is I say GCC, it's the compiler that I'm using for this. And I put in the name of the program that I wanna compile, which is first.c. And then I put hyphen O and I'm gonna specify the name of the file that I want to produce as the executable. So I'm gonna call my executable first. And what you'll see here is we now have this green first and then we have first.c. First.c is our code. And then the green first is our executable. And I can run this. And you see, I don't really get any sort of results, but if I echo out the exit code, you see that I get a result of zero, which was the return code. Now, you know, it might not be as easy to see with a value like zero, but if I change this to say, you know, maybe something like five, we'll be able to see it a bit more clear. So when I compile this, I have to recompile it because I made changes to the program, right? For that to actually apply, we need to recompile our program. I run the program and I echo the result and notice that it gets set to five. So this is the exit code that's being set by this return. So that tells us what that return is really responsible for. So this is the absolute most basic C program that we could possibly write. Let's add a little bit more code to print something to the screen because it's a little weird to just write a program and see nothing happen. To do that, we use a function called printf and printf is gonna take in any text that we give it and it's gonna print that to the screen. Now it's important to note, and as you continue to work with C, you'll see this sort of idea. C doesn't really provide you with a huge amount of default functionality to the point where when I print something, I have to actually add in things like the new line characters myself. So it's a very simplistic, basic setup where I have to do a lot of the work myself to get things up and running. But in that in turn gives me a lot of control, which is one of the main benefits of C is that lets me work very low level. It gives me a lot of control over what I'm doing. So that slash N is the new line character. So it's simply creating a new line. So that's the idea of why we put that in. Aside from that, this is really just like a typical print that you would see in any other programming language. Now, in order to get that print functionality though, I have to get it from somewhere, right? It's not by default included. I actually have to include a library of functions to be able to get that code in. And the way that I do that is I type hashtag include stdio.h. Now this is a really interesting type of statement. The statement that begins with this hashtag or pound symbol is called a directive. 
What happens is the C compilation process generally has three steps to it. The first step is pre-processing. The second step is compiling. And the third step is linking. The pre-processing step is the part that looks at these uh, commands that begin with this pound symbol, these directives. And it basically works to parse those directives for us. In the next step of compilation, that turns all of our code into machine instructions, which we would call object code. And then what linking does is it combines our object code with anything else that's required to actually make it work. So the linking will take a look at this STD IO. It will say, oh, I need to include the standard IO library. So it goes and gets that and links it into our program. That way our program now has a reference for that standard input and output so that it can actually use that to print out the message. So that's the idea of what this code is really doing and what's happening in that compiling process. So even in this simple sort of process of just printing something out onto the screen, we have a little bit more to think about with this idea of pre-processing, compiling, and linking. And you're going to see a lot more instances where these directives are going to be used for different things even beyond just including files into our project. So we're going to see these directives come up more and more. So I just want you to start thinking about that idea of like pre-processing, compiling, and linking. So with this, we now have another functional program that should print hello world onto the screen. And the exit code is still five in this case. So let's, let's take a look and see. Go ahead and compile that. We'll run it. You see hello world is printed to the screen. Notice that there is a new line, right? That's what that slash n was doing. And now if I echo out, I still get that result five because that's what's returned from that function. And just to generally show you, like if I didn't have this new line here, this slash n, what would basically happen is this. We would have the following. If I compile this again, when I run this, notice that it doesn't put a new line in. It just puts everything on the same line, right? So that's what the new line is doing. So you can see that difference between this here, where we actually get the new line happening, and then this here, where we don't have the new line. So that's what that slash n's purpose generally is. And with that, you should now have a pretty good idea of how to write a really basic C program, how to compile it and get it up and running on your Linux operating system. So thanks so much for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one.